Welcome back to another episode of The Mac Rumor Show. I am Dan. We have Hartley here as usual. Um, Hartley, good afternoon. How's it going, man? Anything uh, it's good? Anything new going on in your world? Uh, other than moving very soon and uh, yes, finally pick out finally. a lot of uh, a lot of new stuff for a new desk setup. Dude, that's that exciting. Stuff, home kit. Um, yeah. So that's quite fun. Um, All that stuff's exciting. It's expensive is, is, is what it also yeah. is. Um, yeah that's true but it, so, it is fun to kind of plan all that stuff out for those listening uh we have a gofundme for hartley's house could, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> um speaking of gofundme uh i almost probably needed one for the vision pro ordering which by the way uh for last week's episode we kind of put it out at this you know by the time you listen to it everyone's probably like we already know what happened um so good news i was able to get a vision pro uh pretty much see like flawless but there was a uh, random issue that happened with sizing. So mm. I did I did a scan on my phone. I tried to go as quick as possible because, you know, I just I didn't know if this was going to like really sell out. And it did en- end up selling out for the most part, just getting really pushed back into March. Um, but it wasn't that quick uh, if you were on right at 8 a.m. like I was. And so I did that and uh, I got small for both bands and like a. 27 or something like that for 27 w i don't know what that means 21 w something like that and uh you know i didn't really think anything of it i just hit order done then for fun i scanned on my ipad and i got medium for both straps and like 35 w and i'm like okay uh i don't have like a gigantic head but I don't have a small head. So I guess I should have been alarmed at the small sizing. So I'm guessing that's not going to fit. And like the bummer about this is I'm going to have to open it in the store. So I can't really do an unboxing, but like, do people really care about unboxings anymore? I know with this specifically, it's kind of a big deal. And I will show you what you get in the box in my video and everything, but it's not going to be a proper unboxing. There'll probably be a bunch of other videos for that. Unfortunately, uh, but I think I'm going to have to open it in the store and try it out. And uh, I did get confirmation from uh, my local retail store that they will also have people there and extra bands there on site that they can swap out if need be. Um, and so that's good. I'm not allowed to film there, which is unfortunate. Uh, I think I have to go through some hoops and I just don't think it's going to happen. So, yeah, I uh, I won't be able to do any you know unboxings for that. But at least I'll be able to get the right size and then immediately go back and make a video for you all but uh hartley i'm very sad that you couldn't experience this i know my time will come and at yes. least when it does all of these things like sizing um will be, be resolved and yeah. i will know what i'm doing a little better um because you know i can yeah. i can go through the process and take a scan and get all this stuff so i can you know i can scan myself five times if i want to and see what make sure that i really know what it is supposed to be um mm-hmm. And also, I would like to know a little bit more what ordinary people think uh, before I actually spend that money. Um, and yeah. even stuff like storage. I don't know how much storage I might want on that. Um, I just so, want one terabyte because I'm like, well, we probably are going to put a lot of stuff on this. So I should probably get the most. But my guess is like 512 is going to be the safe bet, right? Don't mm, go 256. Yeah. Don't go a terabyte. It's probably 512. I'm guessing a lot of things you're probably going to do. Um, would be local for the most part, but maybe not. I mean, if you're downloading videos for all, you know, for like the plane or a trip or something, I guess, you know, it's going to take up a lot of storage. So, um, yeah, I- I'm excited. It comes out next week. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about it again, of course, but, um, but before we, 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 we get back into everything, let's, let's talk about yesterday which was the 40th anniversary, the 40th birthday mm-hmm. of the Mac, which I will say I was a little like taken back by how many people were like, happy birthday, inanimate object. Like, I just it just seems weird to me. But I jumped in eventually because I did get a little nostalgic about my first Mac that I ever had. So I think it'll be fun to talk about that uh, and, and get your thoughts on your first Mac. And I mean, 40 years, that's a long time. And it's one of the most important Apple products of all time. Uh, so 
Let's start with you, Harley. What was your okay. first Mac that you ever owned personally? Actually, what was the first Mac you ever used, whether it be in school or at someone's house? And then what was the one that made you like that you bought that you're like, I have to have this for myself? The first Mac I remember using was one of the uh, white plastic MacBook models. Um, oh. And uh, they were kind of great. I still love that design. Um, yeah. with the backlit logo, it kind of, it, people always seem to get inexplicably angry with me when I say that I want another plastic MacBook, but I do. Um, I think it yeah. would be lighter. Um, I think if it could hit a lower price point and they did just look great. Um, very mm -hmm. unique when you compare to what laptops look like at that time. And these massive, uh, just hunks of black plastic. Um, and then, uh, the first Mac that I owned was a, 2009 uh 21.5 inch iMac uh which okay. I loved and used for like seven years um I yeah. used it until basically it, it I I I truly had uh used it beyond uh beyond what it beyond its natural lifespan um and yeah that was just a, a great great all-round machine what were you using your Mac for at that time after uh, school work and it was kind yeah. of the machine that really sort of uh, opened the internet up for me. Uh, I used to do like little, I don't know, when I was a kid, like stop motion animation videos and um, it, it, old YouTube. YouTube when it when it used to be in its in its in its early days. Um, it, when you think about sort of a, it was a very distinctive experience. YouTube at that time with the memes and uh, particular YouTubers and even just the UI of it's very nostalgic. And I, I really associate yeah. that time as well um, uh, with my iMac, uh, which I still kind of miss because I haven't actually had a, an iMac since then. Um, I went straight to a MacBook Pro after that. Uh, but I kind of do want to go back to an iMac because um, I have very fond memories of them. But what about you? This episode of the Mac Rumor Show is sponsored by Incogni. The U.S. has a big data privacy issue that you might not be aware of, and that's people search sites. These websites create detailed personal profiles on millions of Americans and publish them online for anyone to see with just a simple Google search. People search can be abused by those with bad intentions. Incogni puts an end to this problem very easily. Simply create an account and grant Incogni the right to work for you. They will contact data brokers on your behalf and request the information to be removed. And then all you need to do is kick back and watch them work their magic with progress updates on how things are going along the way. I've heard some pretty crazy stories about how people use these people search websites for malicious intent, like a road rage incident gone bad where someone looked up your license plate on a people search website, and that included all of your personal data, maybe even your home address, and that person came to your home to find you. This can easily happen. Incogni removing your data can also help cut down on those terrible robocalls since data brokers are mostly the ones selling your personal phone number to these companies that have these call lists. So take back your personal info and check out Incogni today. Use code THEMACRUMORS at the link in the description down below to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks Incogni for sponsoring this episode. Well, good transition there. Speaking of iMacs, my very first iMac that I, or my very first Mac that I ever used was the iMac G3 back in like the late 90s, early 2000s when I was in elementary school. Uh, the, the old transparent colors and those were so good. Um, we literally only used them for playing games and the games were like educational games. Fraction Munchers, fantastic game. Uh, we would play uh, uh, Oregon Trail. I mean, just the classics, you know, um, <laughs> that was just another just lifetime ago. It feels like um, I actually have a purple transparent G3 here. I don't know if it works. And in fact, it probably doesn't because during our move, I I dropped it. So I have to put that <laughs> back together. Um, it's I think it's OK, but uh it, yeah so the the g3 was the first one but then i bought my own mac because like through school i was you know at home the family computer was a pc maybe like a gateway or something a dell i don't know um but then like when i got into school like high school and i was doing like our media it was interactive media so we would learn how to like do all the stuff that i basically do now um 
we had uh man those cinematic displays remember those mm. before they were called like thunder they were the cinematic yeah. displays or the ci- cinema cinema displays. Cinema, yeah. yeah yeah not cinematic cinema displays those were like and we had a like the tower the mac pros whatever what were the the g4 i don't remember the names i always forget but uh yeah those were like the best of the best and we had those like we only had one that was like at a station that like if you wanted to really do something crazy you needed to rent it out like and go to that but then everybody's workstation was like a what was the imac in 2005 do you know or 2006 uh i think that was where that was uh the that was in that same era the white plastic yeah just before the unibody those were so good uh, we had so yeah we I guess we didn't we weren't up to date they were discontinued in 2006 but we were still running those bad boys um, and everybody had their own there was probably like 15 kids in the class it was a very limited class and everybody had their own um, white G5 iMac we might have even had some G4 sitting around there too um, what was that Mac Pro called back then or it wasn't even a, it wasn't probably a Mac Pro but what was it G4 maybe yeah the Power Mac G4. We had those. I don't think we had the cubes. Um, and even the iMac G4, where it has the little like bubble bottom base, which I actually have one. I can't pick it up right now, but it's above me on the shelf here. Um, those those were cool, but those were like kind of fading out as I got in. But then uh, to move on here. Those were what I used up until 2006 when I finally convinced my parents to get me a Mac Mini. And that was the the 2006 Mac Mini. I don't know what generation it was. But it had the like glass top with the aluminum body. Um, it was pretty cool. I love that. Thing. What Max have you had since then? In the, in a personal capacity. Okay, in a personal capacity. Um, so then, okay, I had the Mac Mini to high school. I don't know that I took. I, I might have taken it to college, honestly, with me and, and a monitor. And then I got my first. No, yeah, freshman year I got a laptop for sure, and. <laughs> I got a uh, the MacBook Pro, the black one. What was that one? That was just a MacBook Pro, right? Or yeah. was it just a MacBook? No, I think it was just MacBook, the black one. Yeah, the MacBook. Um, it's basically like the same white one, but they made it black. Yeah. That uh, looks great. I love that thing. It was awesome. I got really drunk one night, though, in college. And uh, I was in a loft, and my desk was underneath it. And sorry to be gross, but uh, yeah, I threw up. And I missed my trap. My trash can was on a hook, like on the bed hanging. And I missed the trash can. And it went all over the Mac, which like, yeah, you think like, all right, that's gross. And you got to clean it, right? Somehow, unless I did something and I just, again, was too drunk to even know. The next day I I, uh, turned it on and I don't know if something like seeped into the display or what, but there was just like half the screen was all messed up, dead pixels, just black. I don't know what happened. And uh, there was, like, just dried up stuff in between the hinge, and it was disgusting. Lovely. Uh, I did have them clean it out and, like, get it fixed, and it cost a lot of money to get that fixed. Um, But I still used it up until, I think, the next year when I really started doing audio production for my major. And I got a, uh, maybe it was the 2009 MacBook Pro. Maybe it was two years later. Um, I loved the one in between that. What with the different keys, like that? Remember that MacBook Pro with the like it was the silver aluminum whatever MacBook Pro, and it had those like very I don't know how to describe the keys, but it was like the best keyboard on any MacBook yeah. Pro ever. Um, and They're then I got it. Yeah, I don't know what it is about them, but I loved it. And then uh, I think I got the one after that, where they like kind of changed that a little bit, same body design. Um, yeah, and I had that for a while. Bit. Yeah, they slimmed it down. I didn't like that as much. Um, and then I got a iMac after college. So I used that whole thing till college was done. After college, I got an iMac, like a 21 and a half inch, I believe. And then I bought a MacBook Pro and then an iMac Pro. And that was the last of it. That was the last things that I purchased on my own because that brings me up into my Mac rumors time. I think the iMac Pro was even during mac rumors time but uh i still bought it for myself because that was unnecessary of a purchase at the time um and that was it and ever since then we you know we we got review units and and purchased our own stuff and 
you know, everything was mostly for work, but yeah, good times. Lot yeah. of, the Mac was a fun time, 40 years. Congratulations. I think the interesting thing with the Mac as well compared to other devices is just how similar it is um, to the Mac, say 20 years ago, or even back to the original and how many elements of the UI have basically stayed the same um, yeah. even to today. And and that is strange. And I don't think we, we get that with, I mean, to a large extent, the iPhone's similar, but you know, the iPhone didn't have the app store when it launched. And uh, you, I mean, you couldn't even set wallpapers like you can now. So it was a, it was a much more basic experience, but okay, the grid of apps looked the same, but I feel like the Mac in its modern form has way more in common um, with the original and even stuff like the dock um, has stayed the same for so long at this point um, and stuff like Finder, these features really do stick around for an extremely long time. It's such a sort of mach mature machine at this point. I think that's why it's so popular um, because so much of it does actually kind of stay the same. And yet it's, uh, it's not, it, it's all, uh, it's, it's way sort of simpler than the offerings that have been had in, in each era for different reasons uh, on the other side of the fence. So everyone who's listening, please let me know. Uh, please let us know what your favorite uh, Mac was, but also Hartley and everybody else. What was your favorite Mac OS version? Mm. Oh, um, I, it's, it's annoying because I, was it Yosemite that moved to the flat design for the first time? Uh, and I'm looking at all of these right now. That's what I'm. I mean, uh, like with the icons and stuff, yeah. Yeah. The icons change in Yosemite. And that was exciting. Least, uh, yeah. I, I seem to remember it did, I did run the beta and it caused me terrible problems. But oh, yeah. uh, I, I, did, uh, I did love that redesign. Part of me does still miss the, the aqua, um, so it kind of skewer morphism. Uh, yeah. Would I want it back? No. No. Do I miss it? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I've got a, a specific favorite other than that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at, like, I don't know if these are my favorite, but I have such a love for, like, Mac OS Tiger, because that was, like, when I was prime, like, my prime using this day. So it's just, like, super nostalgia. I'd say probably Snow Leopard was weirdly my favorite. I don't know. That was, like, mid-college for me. I just, I loved it. It just looked good. It was sleek. It still kind of had all the same stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I kind of wouldn't mind going back to this stuff for some reason. I just really like it. But it's so I, old. I bet it would surprise you if you actually did go back to using that sort of Mac. How sure how it's fine. modern it feels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, even I'm looking at all of these Mac OS X releases. And, uh, I mean, they all, honestly, like you said, <laughs> they all have the same core, like, built upon foundation of this like opera and then just like the design has changed in terms of like icons and looks and like just moved with the generations that we're moving into or the or the years that we're moving into so it makes sense but like you're right the finder looks the same the the dock looks the same the menu bar looks the same nothing has changed how many iterations has like windows gone into i feel like they've changed quite a bit of their stuff um yeah you know it's still like probably ultimately the same foundation but way more stretched out in my opinion compared to like mac os 10 and up has just been visually mac os has same. been way more consistent yes um, and yes. i feel like even just <clears throat> even if we're not talking visually and you're talking about the the way in which um basic tasks are achieved that is also um been remarkably consistent um, i mean i haven't used windows for a long time now so i don't like to to criticize windows too much um, I did. I did use to dual boot Windows because um, I used to love yeah. a bit of Mac gaming. Uh, I was yeah. I was one of those people that loved to dual boot. I would boot into Windows Seven um, and I would play some games. And it actually led me to buy a Mac Pro, a trash can Mac Pro, um, for gaming, oh. which was the most ridiculous um, game. I forgot. I bought a Mac. I have. bought a. I bought a personal trash can Mac Pro. Sorry, I want to throw that in there. Totally forgot. I bought one of those. That was honestly my favorite Mac that I also hated. So, you know, just throwing that out there. 
Like I loved it, it and it also sucked at the same time. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. I didn't I didn't keep it yeah. for that long. Um no, I got me a really good deal with it. Um so yep. that's how I how I managed to to get it. But just the the little uh, sort of the attention to detail on that machine, how when you would sort of tilt it, um all of the the ports would illuminate. Um and of course the way you could just slide that casing off and I would just slide it off just to have a look at the internals. It um, looks so good. Yeah, and it was just it, it was I think it's probably one of the best looking Apple devices ever. And that that bar is pretty high. Um, but I, I loved that computer. I also loved the computer I had after that, which actually couldn't be more different, which was the twelve inch MacBook. Um completely yep. different direction. But that was a great machine to use. I even I even liked the butterfly keyboard. I unashamedly liked it. Oh, I liked it too. I did have that as well. You're reminding me of all the ones that I forgot about. Um I think at that point, though, we're like kind of inching closer to like I was a content creator, whether or not it was for Mac rumors or not. It was like I was still buying these to make videos. Um, so I don't know if that really counts as like a personal computer that I was using more so for work. Um, but yeah, Snow Leopard, love it. I guess if I had to do a modern release, I'd probably say I liked Big Sur when we went into that change, right? That was like a pretty big change from Catalina to Big Sur. And that's yeah. when like. Yeah, I liked that. That was okay. Um, you know, this uh, what are we at? Sonoma now. That's that's good. I'm fine with it. Um, it's kind of been less change over the years, which is yeah. Is what well, it's it been is. mainly adopting features from iOS at this point. Yeah, um, but that's okay. I mean, it's such a mature yeah. um, OS, yeah. like I say. That what what else do you want them to do to it, really? Right. You exactly. know, if we were to discuss right now and say what was our iOS 18 wish list, we'd come up with a lot. I don't think we'd have much for a Mac OS wish list other than maybe some more AI features. But again, that's kind of a cross platform thing. Um, and what else would I like? Just like redesign the music and podcast app. But I've really got like nothing else because it's so, it's such a good experience, Mac OS. And I think that's why people, um, also where people keep their Macs for so long. That's why I think people are maybe a little bit more nostalgic about Macs that they own than things like iPhones, which feel like they come and go a little bit more. Um, but I think you develop a little bit more of a relationship with a Mac. So we're living in the past. Let's go to the present day. Do you think this stuff, we, we'd we be doing the same thing about like what we're doing right now with the Mac. Do you think we'll be doing this stuff in the future with the Vision Pro, which is the latest new thing that Apple's coming out with, spatial computer? Do you think this is going to uh, have the same track record? No. I don't. Okay. Um, I think that that is because the fund fundamentally the Mac was a, a GUI with a keyboard and mouse, and you look at a screen. What Vision Pro is will basically fundamentally change over the next twenty or thirty years until we get to glasses, and what will work well in terms of even just input, maybe this pinching gesture, maybe we'll move away from that. Maybe there'll be something else that is better. Um, I don't know if that is, is is so refined out of the gate. And even just the hardware and form factor is just bound to, to change. Um, yeah. That's not a bad thing. I just think it's a different source of product. No, I agree. Like you said, like we're not, we were looking at all these Macs and talking about all of them and like more or less, they all largely still look the same, just more modernized. The next Vision Pro, even like in two years from now, the third generation could look substantially different, be a completely different form factor. Like you said, if, if the end goal is glasses, it's not going to look anything like what we have now. So that's a drastic, drastic, drastic change. So yeah, I agree with you. And I also just like, I'm still not fully bought in that this is going to be something that we all want to use on a regular basis. And I don't think I ever will be bought in until it is something that is less intrusive and something more on the go like glasses. And AR until glasses. we actually are, are seeing it used actively in, in a much broader, much more ordinary set of circumstances, it's just not going to have the widespread appeal of the Mac. And I know that the Mac was really expensive when it launched. I know that in concept it was for everyone, but in price point it very much wasn't. Um, and right. maybe that is a little bit similar to the Vision Pro. But until we are seeing... Uh, Apple Vision products, if you like, being used in schools um, until we're seeing students using them to write their assignments, um, until we're having just ordinary, ordinary everyday people using that yeah. device to 
watch some Netflix or whatever. Uh, no, you can't do that. Really see it, but you can, but yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, you can't, you can't do, do, that. do that. But that's what I mean. Like until we get to that, until we get to that point, yeah, um, it's kind of hard to see it on exactly the same trajectory. I think it's a different trajectory, but that's okay. Um, I'm I'm glad that we have this product at last. We've been talking about this thing for. I mean, that it was in development for so long. Um, there are patent filings about this kind of thing going back ten years. Originally, it was designed to plug into the iPod. That's how far back the development of this goes. So, yeah, uh, I'm just glad that we have it. Um. So, with the Netflix thing, real quick, I've gotten some conflicting thoughts and reports and not reports but like just like people's opinions on it because i tweeted that like i just feel like netflix spotify um what's the other one that isn't doing it youtube um like i just felt like they're being petty because you i i thought you had to opt in for an ipad app no you have to opt out if you don't it's automatically going to happen um, if you have a iPad app, it would just, or iOS app, it would just work. And, uh, those companies have opted out and said to use the browser instead. And I've gotten some people defending them saying like, well, no, they don't want their experience to be bad. Like they don't want, you know, they don't fully buy into vision pro. They're not like, why would they develop and waste manpower? I totally agree that I don't think Netflix and YouTube should need or be required to make an app. I don't I don't see why they wouldn't because they made one for HoloLens, didn't didn't they make stuff for HoloLens? Like there was other like way more proof of concepty products out there where like a Netflix app was in development or was going whether it launched or not, like there were articles saying that they were going to focus in on that and make an app. There has been none of that for this. Part of me thinks they're being petty towards Apple with some of their stuff. Uh you know, the pettiness has a long history with Netflix and Apple with the whole TV app and how things are going that way. So that's kind of where I'm like, I'm getting that idea from. And then people have told me like, no, why should they invest money into a vision pro app? Which again, I said, I agree on, but like to not have an iPad app makes no sense to me, but they're saying like, well, what if the experience is bad? They don't want it to reflect poorly on the app. So if you just use the browser, that's mostly Apple's fault because it's Safari and the way it shows up is not really their whole issue, I guess, which I still feel like is kind of wrong, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I still feel like it, it It didn't make any sense not to have an iPad app. I don't know that it's going to be that. A media player is a media player at the end of the day. So how can you mess that up that badly to where the browser is a more significant experience? Like you have an iPad app on your iPad for those uh, streaming services. Who's going to the browser and saying like, nah, this runs better. Like I'm, this is better experience for me. Now I know it's a totally different like platform and product, but I still feel like ultimately it's going to operate the same. So I just, uh, you know, I don't really know yet, but just thoughts on what do you think on that? I, I largely agree. I think that the truth is probably somewhere in between. In between. Because uh, I do think there is bad blood between these companies and Apple. And I do think that it does feel a little bit spiteful. It feels spiteful to Apple users. Um, and I think that these companies are suspicious of this product and they don't want to bolster Apple by doing that because if these developers actually provide these apps, which people want, you know, people want to be able to watch Netflix on Vision Pro. It's yeah. like an endorsement of Vision Pro as a concept, which ultimately is an endorsement of Apple's services. And companies like Netflix have long since been very angry about things like um, App Store fees. Um, they obviously don't like the TV app very much. Um, they are obviously rivals to Apple TV Plus, which is growing rapidly. So if they are, endorse Apple effectively, um, then all they're ultimately doing is driving users. Um, and maybe not very many, but they want to inconvenience Vision Pro users. iPad users, you know, everyone's got an iPad or virtually everyone has got an iPad. So if you have an iPad, you're, go you're going to want to watch Netflix. So they need to provide it on that platform. There's no question. Vision Pro, it's not the same numbers. They don't care, and they don't really want to help those users. Um, but then the other side of that is I do think that it does still require just a little bit of optimization. I don't think it is exactly a carbon copy of the iPad app. Um, and although it, the, it's the iPad app that is running on a different platform in the same way that you can run like an iPhone app on a, an Apple Silicon Mac, I still think there is some optimization that has to be done 
for that i don't know uh that's what i've seen a few developers saying online yeah um, i can't imagine I, it's like tons of manpower and yeah. money though i think it depends on on how customized that experience is so if it's using um swift and it's using a lot of um uh sort of pre-made apple design elements and icons etc then i'm sure that translates better than if it's a heavily customized experience um so maybe something like an electron app like i don't know like slack or obsidian those would not be very easy to take cross-platform even though they have an ipad app maybe those things actually do require more optimization but something else like an indie developer that has heavily adopted swift ui maybe that does go over better so i think that comes into it as well so the truth is probably somewhere in between if vision pro is awesome and i want to use it all the time uh i'm gonna be upset that there's no spotify app because like if i'm gonna be using this on a plane i download music like i essentially if this is like the elimination of an ipad for me on the plane like I'm not going to bring it. So what am I listening to music to and what? Like I want it all on one device. So I'm a little annoyed that there's no Spotify app. And like people are like, well, what does it matter? You can just watch it on the browser. Like that, that the biggest thing is there's no offline. Like I can't download it. So if I want to download it for use on a plane, sorry, I'm not watching your content then because I can't. I can't listen to your music. I would have to switch to Apple Music. This is another direction of like yeah. pushing so me there. That is all the more reason to switch to Apple Music. But I will say that the Apple Music app for Vision OS looks amazing. And I wish that they would uh, put that same amount of effort into the Apple Music app for Mac because it, it's so nicely designed. Um, even when Spotify eventually and inevitably do bring their app to Vision OS, there is no way it is going to look as good as the Apple Music app does. And we'll see. Vision OS, is, you know, it's a visual experience. That does matter. That matters with these sort of quote unquote spatial apps or spatial experiences yeah. like i probably wouldn't be listening to music too much on a vision pro but like it's nice to have that option and even App apple themselves like highlights uh scenarios where you're working and you pull up apple music put on some music move it off to the side do your thing and you have it playing and you're probably using airpods or or you can just listen to music you know with a kind of that conduction uh wait is that con bone con yeah bone conduction right it's kind of like how that basically operates although it is like an actual speaker yeah i think it's just a downward firing speaker yeah um, but it's like it's like the same con like not concept but yeah. it's like the same feeling of yeah, like because it's listening it's not, to music it's above your, your ears, ears. Yeah. yeah yeah so like i always just like go back to those bone but conducting if you headphones. use your new airpods pro uh the ones with USB C in particular you'll get your lossless audio and which if i you will are be doing, doing a productive task you get stuff like uh you can get microsoft word on on vision os if you are doing something productivity related and you want to move your yeah. apple music window over to the side you've got your airpods in you you know mu music's important um yeah so that's a miss from spotify in my opinion one last thing on vision pro before we move on to our because kind of like a past present future episode and we just want to touch on something that has been getting some headlines here but one last thing on vision pro the the walkthrough video that came out last week when the um pre-orders happened right they showed real quickly again which is like i feel like this is such a cool feature and they're just like really not focusing on it but like they showed looking at the mac connecting and like having your mac uh, like but they were like yeah enough of that and like they showed it briefly and she's literally like all right enough work let's move on to something more fun dinosaurs and i'm like no 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 go back to the mac thing i don't care about the dinosaurs like that was cool one time my kids will enjoy it but uh so i, I am curious like what it's just your Mac that runs on Vision Pro, right? Like I can literally do anything on my Mac that I can do on, like how it's just know, using what, it as an external display. An external display. Um, I wonder how that is going to work, like how well are, it's going to work. I mean, I've used it in a, a MetaQuest um, Pro. I don't know if that's is that the is that the the the, the high end model. Uh, that is and, the highest one, but the MetaQuest Three is probably the better one, honestly, for the money. Um, but I've used that sort of experience where you look at your laptop, it pairs, and then you get an external display. And it was really good on an Oculus um, device or you know, a mess device, whatever we're calling it now. Um, sure. If Vision OS, um, if uh, Vision Pro has uh, these considerably better displays, considerably lower latency, um, it should be really good. And although you can't have multiple uh, displays, 
for your Mac, which actually doesn't bother me too much. I, I wish it was there. But what you can Oh, so you can't do, have like two different no, sections. You can't. Oh, you that's can only annoying. have one. But what you can do is you can have other windows um, okay. from other Vision OS apps. So if you want to use your Mac, um, you, your your Mac display in Vision Pro, but then have your Apple Music to one side and then have Safari to another side, and those apps are running in Vision OS, you can do that. And I think that actually is what a lot of people will do. And maybe that's, I think part of the reason is processing power why Apple doesn't want you to have two windows, but also I think they don't want you to see it as a device where that is its main purpose is it's just Mac external displays. I think they want to nudge you toward um spatial apps and they, they want to nudge you towards using towards using vision os specifically so it's kind of a way of making you uh it's like using an ipad alongside your mac you you can use something yeah. else um i don't know if the That'd cursor will move over or probably not but uh, universal oh, yeah. control in vision os would be a neat idea maybe we'll get that sort of thing eventually that would be cool maybe it will work who knows um i felt like i had one more thing on vision pro but i uh i kind of forgot yeah, that's okay. We'll move on to uh, something that I didn't think we'd be talking about for a little while because I kind of forgot about it, uh, and that's Apple Car. There has been some reports on that. Is it kind of like a well, the sense that I'm getting? Kind of like either you figure this out and how you want to do it and get it out there within the next few years, or you just completely shut it down. You're not doing it. Is that kind of the sense of what we're we're getting at here? Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much where we are. Uh, so the project has been scaled back repeatedly. When Apple first set about uh, envisioning this car, they were imagining a full self-driving vehicle in the true sense of the term, where um, there wouldn't even be a steering wheel, there would be no pedals, um, the seats would face inwards on benches around the exterior, um, sort of the uh, the outer edge of the the vehicle. It would be a much more kind of sociable environment and ultimately completely different to anything we're we're used to it wouldn't look like a car um but it has just been beset by difficulty after difficulty and it has been scaled back and they've had to think how are they pricing it let's drop the price point let's reintroduce the steering wheel let's introduce conventional seating um, and now it looks like they're not aiming for full self-driving at all not even a, a higher level form of self-driving it will all they are aiming to do is literally provide something basically equivalent with what tesla can do now so just assisted driving lane changes adaptive cruise control um, and that's why apple is kind of in a position where internally they are supposedly saying if we can't even do that then just forget it okay so with that said it seems like apple's going to do that right and looking to target 2028 as the release yes okay good I'm happy about that. I don't, I'm not ready. In 2028, well, they were targeting 2026, right, for this, and like they are not going to do that. 2026 would be so quick. I know we talked about this maybe a couple years ago, and you know, and I was like, ah, who cares? That's so long from now. I don't want to. Okay, well, it's 2024. That's in two years. I'm not ready to, uh, I'm not ready to have a car that drives itself completely and has no steering wheel, and I am just a person sitting there. I am not ready for that at all. I don't think we are ready for that at all. I don't think the the technology is there, obviously. So uh, let's not do that. And I'm totally fine with Apple just making a, a an electric car. Honestly, I think that would hopefully make it yeah. more affordable. Um, I still feel it. It's appealing. There's got to be. It's basically just like I don't know. I don't know why it would be appealing because like. It just would be. It just would be. I'm sure the interior, the way it's designed, obviously the the whole infotainment, all the features that it'll have with your phone, your uh, iPad, maybe. Who knows what you can do with it? It just like it just feels like it's going to be a cool car in general. And also, like you said, or like I'm hoping, it, it could bring down that price and just be a normal car and a competitor to Tesla. So I, I assume know. it's going to compete in that category where at the moment, basically, you're choosing between uh, a Tesla Model S or uh, a Porsche Taycan. And that is in that oh, kind damn, of... That's still, what, pretty, like, that's still pretty expensive. That's like 80 I, to 100K. Yeah, I think that's that's probably where it will be. And that's kind of where it has to be, because Apple is not going to position itself below a brand like Porsche. They, they are going to want to be seen as a luxury brand in that space. Um, and 
it really would provide a very interesting proposition to a lot of those customers, both Tesla and Porsche customers. I mean, maybe I'm forgetting some other brands like Lucid here as well. Um, yeah. In that category, um, where if you what you are looking for is connected experiences, and what you are looking for is something that heavily integrates with your home kit, maybe start even stuff like health kit. Maybe you want your back passengers to be able to use Vision Pro. Maybe you want mm -hmm. there to be uh, information about um, uh, your your journey should be available for your other passengers in the car on their devices automatically. We can leverage stuff like ultra wideband. We can use the Find My network. We can sort of leverage the the, the whole the whole thing here. We can have spatial audio in the car. Um, oh, there's tons of things that they can do. Yeah, tons and, of and I think that that offering would go because i think at the moment for like tech people teslas are seen as the tech people car but realistically yeah. i don't really agree with that anymore i don't think that putting yeah. a big screen in the middle of the car and having a, a pretty decent app is really enough um and i know you can play games on it now which is like okay that's cool i guess but yeah. it's it's not like a serious experience that that actually feels um, particularly advanced, which is why I think a lot of people are really excited about the next generation CarPlay because it's more in that direction. Um, so I think it has loads of potential to kind of take that crown. Um, and some people will always want the the Porsche and a more a more classic, more conventional kind of approach to an EV if there is such a thing. Um, mm -hmm. But there is also the potential to go even further than companies like Tesla have gone. I think there's a uh, car. You know, I'm. I'm this is my year where I have to get a new car because my lease will be up. So I've just been heavily watching videos and keeping my options open and even non EVs and uh, the Lincoln Nautilus for 2024, they basically put a 49 inch display. It goes from like the whole, you know how we've seen like the mock-ups for CarPlay, the next generation. It's like multiple displays across like your entire, it's the entire dash. The entire dash is a display, and then there's one like 11 inch maybe or 14 like smaller display that's like your main one. And then up here, it basically looks to me like they were heavily inspired by the the widgets from the CarPlay one. It has like your weather and your calendar and like all of this stuff. Although it's hilariously all run by Google, which is kind of funny um, because it looks a lot like Apple's next generation CarPlay. But that was like, but it still has CarPlay available. I wonder if that'll be a car that Apple will. Uh, allow for you know next gen carplay to take over and utilize that screen but like that to me was more intriguing than like a tesla at this point i'm like well that's pretty sweet that's like a that feels more advanced to me to be able to control and customize that dash to be whatever i want and then the main stuff is on here and it's basically like your computer that you use to control all of that and it just felt more um of a better experience tech wise at least that felt like a tech car like yes you're right the tesla to me is still very advanced it gets software updates like that's still the only car that regularly gets software updates that could improve and add some new features whether or not they're actually useful features or like things that people will use you know making your car fart is funny one time but after that you know it just kind of is what it is um so yeah i'm hoping more cars do what lincoln did with the nautilus for this year um, and kind of look at how that experience is from a tech perspective. Driving is a whole other thing. I don't know how Apple Car is going to actually drive. Yeah. I'm not the person for that. Uh, I'm in, but... I'm interested in that as well because I don't like the feel of Teslas. Um, okay. I I'm 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 weirdly fussy about the the feeling of these things, but I feel like Apple is one of the companies that can get this right because Apple does have an understanding of how important sort of um, tactile stuff is. Like think of um, yeah. Even I say on the digital crown um, and the feedback that you get uh, with the Taptic engine from that, Apple I feel understands these things. Um, or even with like your your little um, volume controls and force sensor yeah. controls on the AirPods Pro, I think they understand it, and I hope that they will uh, not just uh, give it give it that kind of empty kind of soapy feel that that Teslas have. Um, I hope that they give it something a little bit more that does have actually have more feeling. And I hope that now they're having this change of direction, maybe that this is what will prompt them to go in that direction and actually rethink, well, if it's got to have a steering wheel, if we've got to have the driver be more involved, then we're going to make sure that it actually feels good, that it's responsive. Just 
for the love of God, don't make your own charging standard. <laughs> just, yeah. just adopt the one. Like it, we don't need a lightning charger on this. Okay, just adopt, just adopt what everyone else is using. It was NACS or whatever the Tesla standard is. Just do it, please, for the love of God. Just do it. Okay, that's all I'm gonna ask for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, what it would be cool. I'm thinking about like the interior. You know, BMWs have the little. A lot of other cars have it too. But the uh, the dial that you use to adjust yeah, the iDrive controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you imagine if like. That was a big digital crown that you're just spinning around. Like, I don't know. I'm just no, thinking about these weird I'd Apple love things that. in there. I'd love that kind of stuff. Um, I just hope that yeah. it's not. I just hope it's not an Apple Tesla. I hope they don't just put a big iPad in the middle, and it just feels like next gen CarPlay on a big iPad. And maybe it's a little better build quality than a Tesla, but it's basically just a Tesla. I I don't want that. Give Give me something that feels completely different. Um, and there's space well, for it because I will say. I don't feel like there's that many good EVs. Um, I still feel like EVs are, are really in their infancy. And um, when I say there's not that many good ones, I'm not saying there aren't good ones. I'm just saying there's not yeah. many. There's not that many to choose from. Um, and I feel like a lot of them have gone in this direction of just put everything on screens and then that's futuristic. But yeah, I think that's just a little bit stupid and a little bit reductive. So this won't apply to Apple because it's going to be expensive. But like, there just aren't a lot of good, non-expensive EVs. Like what I've noticed during my research phase here, even though I'm early on, I'm still looking. Okay, here's two things that I've noticed. One, uh, it's either really good and it fits and checks all the boxes, uh, but it's like $100,000 at the end of the day. And I just can't afford that. Um and two, everybody complains about uh, buttons. Like you just said, put it on the screen, let it control. So everything that I've noticed is like, oh, this EV, all the futuristic screens, but they do still have buttons for your climate controls. And like that has been every person reviewing has been like, like basically point of emphasis, this still has buttons for some. And it is true. Some of the things that like, why do I need to go in through six different menu settings to turn on my wipers? I don't understand. I want to just do that right away. I don't want to touch the screen. Some things I ultimately just don't care about. But like, those are kind of the big things that I'm noticing right now. And I'm noticing like, the EVs that I do like, I don't know, I just at the end of the day, I'm like, well, if I'm going to spend that much, I might as well spend less and just get another Tesla. <laughs> like, Because at the end of the day, I give it I give it crap and like say it's still not as good as what people think it is. But they're just so inexpensive now uh, relative to other cars and for what you're getting that I'm just kind of like, well, it doesn't make any sense for me to not just get a Model Y at this point. Um, but I'm hoping that I'll find something. I'm even looking at non EVs. That's how much I've, I really want to yeah. get out of this space. Like I... Uh, and I want to stay electric because I just love the way it drives. I love one pedal driving. Like, it's just, it's awesome. But I don't know. I just, I'm a free agent. If there's any brands out there, car brands listening, do your best. Woo me. I'll gladly make a video on your car. I don't care. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe Lucid. We're we're friends with Lucid. Lucid, can you just help me out with the car, please? That'd be great. That's not yeah, going to I'll take one, too. Yeah. Well, Hartley, for sure. Yeah. Come on. Hartley, you're more like a Jaguar person, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but I'm just I'm just I trying mean, to think of like the most British sounding English I mean, sounding brand. That Jaguar. is a, a, a British brand, yeah. <laughs> what what would be your dream car that you can buy? I mean, with with, with infinite resources, I would say something like uh, like a Bentley Continental GT, but that is not for tech. That's just because. The interior is just insane. Um, okay, let me let me let looks. me rephrase this question because everyone's gonna pick like a crazy friggin' car. Yeah, well, what you ask your... me anything. No, okay, let, I I take it back because I've ultimately realized at this point in my life I don't care what people's dream cars are in the sense of like <laughs> I want a I want a McLaren. Like you're not getting a McLaren. <laughs> what is what is the car that if you had like if you were to like you can still afford it. But it's like you're teetering on the point of like, this was a dumb purchase that I shouldn't buy this. But like, okay. I can still make the payments on it. I'm not getting repossessed by the okay. government. <laughs> uh, I would say probably it would be like the Porsche Taycan in that case. Because okay. Okay. used now, the prices are uh, 
really yeah. they are depreciating worryingly quickly now yeah. um so they're kind of a good thing to pick up used but i don't know what repair costs would be like or something like that but i'm you know i like porsche so that okay. would be that would probably be my choice what about you no nah, because for a while for the longest time i always wanted a bmw that was like my i i just i want a bmw is my dream car i love them in the 90s those like old school 90s like boxier ones were so cool yeah the um, designs were great that they are not yeah. now no no the front like the the front the hood the little the front end was so iconic and they changed it and now i'm just like i i had a bmw it wasn't a very good one but i got one before i got the model y or model three and um you know i would go back to one of one of theirs but i just i i don't know i don't really like it as much anymore so i don't know man i i don't know that i really have like one that i i I think a Rivian is really my like car right now that I would I would really the the SUV even the truck I don't care the R1S or the R1T I love the way they look I love the the functionality and things that they have especially with the trunk and like that pass through storage is really cool just like thinking of things that I can use it like mm. actually for uh, plus I really like I don't love that it's like its own you know UI like the UI looks great but I don't love that I've heard like conflicting reports that it's not that great in terms of functionality. Mm. And that it yeah. just maybe had CarPlay would have been better, but um, I honestly, yeah, probably something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not that's not even that uh, like unobtainable. I probably could. That's kind of the point of my question. I probably could do it, yeah. but it would be really dumb of me to do it because like that's so unnecessary in terms of a monthly payment when I have a family and another car to get. Honestly, whoever makes the first really good EV minivan, I'm on board. I'm buying it. Let's go. <laughs> like get me out of this minivan that i have now i love the idea of a minivan it's great it's great for the family i what hate driving it the uh, a... vw the volkswagen buzz? yeah yeah, ID yeah buzz yeah that's fun oh uh, yeah yeah it is i told my wife about it and she's like that's pretty cool like we'll see we'll see if we can because her lease that is up like this that, year that too kind of that kind of yeah. meets your requirements yeah, she, her lease is up this year as well. So we're going to be both getting, it's going to be an expensive year for down payments on vehicles. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm I looking at it, but we'll see. Anybody have any recommendations for me? I, <laughs> and I, I'm not going to get any like crazy cars that I can't pronounce because I just still getting killed on the CarPlay video of me pronouncing <laughs> all of these, all of these brands. I look. Like, <laughs> The Audi, Audi, yes, it's Audi. I know we don't say that here in the states, okay? Even the people who own those car dealerships don't even say the correct way. Uh, we Americanize everything, but that yeah, that was like the standard Audi and BMW and Mercedes. I do love the Mercedes interiors. I think they're great now with all those the way it's designed and the tech that they have inside. I cannot afford an EQV, so I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, That'd probably be on the list as well with a Rivian. Maybe it's affordable, but like it's a stupid idea. So anyways, for those of you who stuck around, I'd love to hear everybody else's thoughts uh, on all of this. Just kind of a fun, interesting episode before we go back to more Vision Pro, because ultimately it'll be Vision Pro for the next two weeks, probably. Well, definitely in two weeks when we have had our hands on it and can talk more about what it's like. Uh, but yeah. We'll catch everybody in the next episode.